Happy sunshine, boys and girls. A week ago to the day, the USA had a total solar eclipse. And a week later, we have another eclipse. And that's Harvey is eclipsing Houston. I don't have a whole lot of my own words to say. The report from Houston is potent enough. So, once again, I'm going to let Weather Wars 101 video play in the background while I read the latest update from Houston. I'd ask that you all pause right now, set a conscious positive vibration and positive intent for the safety of the people in Houston. So here's the update. Just a note, all of this is just my personal opinion from experience and watching closely what it is they're trying to pull here. Greatly appreciated, y'all. Within the past 8 to 10 hours, it has let up quite a bit for now. And the track of it is, again, still planning on going back down into the Gulf and sweep back across the areas it previously hit, though it seems to have moved east towards my friend's region of the country. Hopefully, if it does go that way, Louisiana will just get a faster moving tropical system as this has been painfully slow here since early Friday. And they're alleging that the rain and flood amounts are still going to double to over 50 inches. I've never heard any mainstream media mention this, but it is what is happening, so I looked it up. It is apparently an observed weather phenomenon known as, I'm going to do my best to pronounce this, guys, Agu Kab Kabams. It's A G U K A B A M S. Agu Kabams. I've never seen that word before. Uh, the common name for it is the brown weather effect. And it's where a tropical system moves into land and continues rotation. Apparently, it typically happens in places like Australia. In this case, the system is still looking to head back into the Gulf, gain strength, and may actually make landfall back over as far as Louisiana by some time later in the week. If my friend reads these comments here, stay safe, brother. It looks like you may already be getting a lot of rain now and in the next few days. Then again, I just have zero trust in the news or where they're getting their data because it's been consistently wrong almost every update. And it all comes straight down from the top. The National Hurricane Center, NOAA, NWS, they're using a quote-unquote European and a quote-unquote U.S. modeling system. They don't show it on the local media, but if you look it up, just picture a huge jumbled ball of wires over the entire region of Texas, with each wire being a predicted path from a ground station. In other words, they truly have no idea. And my friend, I bet you, wouldn't, you won't notice much other than maybe some high winds and really heavy, slow-moving rain, but that's just what the models are showing on average. I've now changed my stance from a quote-unquote <clears throat> test to a full-on quote-unquote false flag style man-made storm in order to, and in parentheses, likely among a list of things, to test and use nationwide emergency response. Everyone from the Coast Guard to FEMA to quote-unquote DOD, or Department of Defense Assets, are going to be in the region for months or longer to the director 
of the National Weather System and Hurricane Center. I saw the aforementioned heavy presence of FEMA before any of this even began, so that alone is suspicious. I hadn't ever typically looked into these guys, but they come off as like NASA in a way, very incompetent. It is certainly being politicized locally and all the way up to DC, and that took no time at all. In fact, it was quickly on Trump's desk, so I heard, according to the head of the National Weather Service, speaking at FEMA this morning in DC. It was the quote unquote, fastest, quickest presidential disaster declaration response he's ever witnessed, end quote. <clears throat> Despite all of the damage and flooding I've personally seen, I'm still surprised this is still dominating national news. Despite the damage, I still currently think at the moment that it's one of those storms like Sandy or Katrina where you won't quit hearing about it for months or years as I've seen the floods and hopefully I won't fall victim to it but they will take a while to go down. I looked at the Gematrian numbers of it all but was inconclusive. Trump will be visiting Texas on Tuesday. Absolutely laughable stage or excuse me, absolutely laughable stage show in my view. It reminds me of Bush standing at ground zero on 9-11 raising a flag or something in the middle of the rubble. It's a staged show. Anyhow, I'll let you guys know what happens here. I am watching these national agency reactions and statements just as I would NASA data. Overall, despite the flooding, at this point, you could decently move about some areas. The only problem is it just completely depends on where you're actually located. So that was pretty much the early day update and now we're going to get the evening update. Well, I can tell you around here it's gotten to the point where you must rely on your own survival and supplies. 911 is essentially out for all intents and purposes over the entire city of Houston, despite trying to keep it going. And the rain and floods still have not let up. A small number of National Guard and FEMA, etc., are being dispatched but cannot reach the areas. There are a small handful of helicopters, Coast Guard choppers, and National Guard Apaches performing high water rescues. There's no real end in sight for the heavy wind and rain as of now, though they're saying maybe 48 hours, but maybe until Thursday through Saturday. Beyond that, no one knows, and the news media will not admit to it. Just tonight, I'm expected to get 18 inches more rain, surpassing any historical records. The limits will surpass 50 inches, which simply has never happened. All resources are used up. Stores shut down either due to floods or because they're literally out of simple food and supplies. The trucks couldn't make it in if they wanted to. No governmental agencies can get into the area even if they wanted to. Most hospitals are either shut down, flooded, or out of food or medical supplies. Some evacuated. I am told the power is going to go down tonight, so I have the bathtubs filled or full just in case. I, I'm guessing he's got his well water or well pump that's electric. He's already experiencing power issues. It's now turning into quote unquote weeks before things can potentially return to any normal state. It is, in my opinion, going to become very desperate as soon as the water does go down and things will ex escalate quickly, to say the least. I've already had one run-in while getting extra fuel with a drunk guy at a gas station. In my opinion only, there are apparently, quote-unquote, apparently, contingency plans in place that cannot be released to the public because they can't openly admit that people will die. Hospitals will cease to function. Power outages alone. Generators don't last forever, and they will run out of supplies. 
In general, they are completely unable, unable to evacuate anyone outside of single individuals via boat or chopper. Some folks have been at work since late last week, sleeping in shifts. That is about all I can say other than this has turned into a survival situation without a doubt. I honestly will be happy if we survive at this point despite the fact that the entire roof of my home is now pouring rain into the attic due to wind tornado damage. I've set up buckets and such, but it will be a week or perhaps even months before anyone can come in to check it out. Anyhow, I'll keep you updated as long as I can, but this has turned into an eerie situation at this point. Just imagine folks without food or access to credit cards for even just a few days. I'm hearing it may be a week or more, just depending on where you are. Take care, guys. That's pretty potent. Well, I'd just like everybody to take time if they feel so moved and tell Grace that that the people in Houston are safe. I love you guys. I'll be back in another one.